Hello and welcome. Good evening, good Thursday evening. I'm so glad that you're here tonight. I'm so excited for you to be here. I'm excited for me to be here with you. And tonight we're gonna do a class that focuses on stretching things out. So, all right. So let's start with our hip opening practice here. We can start, I like to do circles with the torso over the pelvis and making circles so you can almost feel like on your sits bones, you're rocking from one to the other and like drawing a circle, maybe a tiny circle with the tailbone even. And this starts to get into the side of the ribs, inhaling in through the nose, exhaling out. Have that Darth Vader like quality to the breath. And then we're gonna circle the other way. If you've eaten dinner already, this might not be the most super comfortable thing to do. It's just easy, take it easy. All right. We wanna warm up the body here uh, before we start to really get into, thank you so much, Dragon Maiden. So we want to warm up the body before we get into start really getting into deep stretches. So let's come up onto our hands and knees, cat cowing the spine. So, and I'll just use Guinevere as my little, like she's going to be my little challenge ball here. Like we have to make modif modifications for everything. So I'll have to do a Guinevere modifications for my practice right now. And that's okay. So you can point your toes, make sure the knees, ah, there she goes. So make sure your knees and are under the hips, wrists are underneath shoulders. Inhale, sink the abdomen, lift the crown of the head. Exhale, round the spine, tuck the chin and tailbone under. Just kind of flex the spine. Good. As you exhale, press that navel toward the spine. Maybe squeeze the pelvic floor. Inhale, sink the abdomen, release any locks in the body. When I say locks in the body, it's the pelvic floor, the navel, and the base of the throat here. All right, we're gonna tuck the toes under, press the hips up to the sky. I'm gonna walk the dog. By that, I mean send one heel to the floor as you straighten that leg, then send the other heel. Maybe shift the hips from side to side. And we're gonna walk the feet up toward the hands, up to the front of the mat. And think of our intention. My life works beautifully. I listen to my body. I love life. I love lamp, whatever it is your intention is today. Inhaling to halfway up, so we're starting to engage the muscles here of the abdomen, the spine. I better not stand up or my head will get chopped off. I wanted this to be more of an intimate practice here with us together, so I want it to be a floor-based practice. All right, we're gonna plant the hands around the feet, stepping back with the right foot getting into runner's lunge here. So you can use your blocks if you need to. Feel free to come up on them, even on the highest setting if you'd like. And just listen to your body and do what's right for you today. If you're a complete beginner, you may want to send your knee down and then come up. So this is a good modification for that pose. Let's all go ahead and come down to our knee, pressing up to placing the hands on the left thigh and then sinking down just a little bit into that right hip flexor. Exhale, straighten the front leg. Maybe you send the fingers down to meet the toes, maybe not, maybe they stay up a little bit higher. And then bending the front knee. So here we're just gonna start to Work into our hips just a little bit. If you don't have a blanket under your knee, I really recommend it, because when I do this without anything under my knee, it doesn't feel very good. All right. 
So coming forward, planting the hand around that front foot, tuck the back toes, raise the back knee if that's open and available to you. And then we're going to slide the front foot back, meeting in high plank. On your next exhale, we're going to send the hips down to the mat. Send the knees down to the mat, sorry. Hips back to the heels. Squeeze here. So you'll feel um, like in the hip flexors here. You can even place your hands there and then lean forward over. Or if you want. So if we use a prop for this, you can take a blanket and roll up part of it, place it in the hip crease, and then fold over that. I feel my heartbeat in my, around my navel. This is kind of different. I actually see when I look down, if you have long hair and you can look down at your hair, maybe you see your pulse in your hair, just kind of like pulsing your hair. I see that a lot um, here when my hair is like over, like draping down. I'm like, whoa, I feel like Neo from the Matrix, like, On your next exhale, we're gonna come up onto all fours, maybe place the blanket back down. All right, inhale to cat cow. So cow, exhale, cat. Exhale, back to cat, inhale to cow. Cow is when, cow kind of makes sense because the belly hangs. And cat makes sense because the cat is kind of arched like when a cat gets spooked. I'm gonna tuck the toes, exhale, send the hips up, hips up to the sky. Just checking in. Nice deep breath here. As you exhale, you'll look between the thumbs, shifting the shoulders forward and begin to walk all the way up. So we're inhaling to halfway up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale to halfway up, exhale to forward fold. Planting the hands around the feet and we're gonna step back with your left foot. So high runner's lunge here on the other side. You're doing good. I have a friend here on, um, on Twitch. He does the plank challenge. And he's on Instagram and he does his classes live on Instagram. I thought that was pretty cool. So remember your modification for beginners, you can bring your knee down and we're gonna join you here in just a moment. Slightly rocking back and forth, breathing into this high runner's lunge. And then placing the knee down beginning to walk the hands up onto the right thigh. I want to sink down, yeah. shoulders are forward. Exhale, straighten the front leg, send the hands down toward the ankle. If it doesn't go all the way, that's fine. Just go to your edge. And when I say edge, your edge would be not too hard, not too easy, somewhere right in the middle. Walking the hands back up, bending the knee, the front knee, kind of sinking down into the hip. I exhale back. Yeah, last night's practice, I was like, I don't know what it was, but I talked to someone else and, about it and they were like, <laughs> you know, like, they were giving me like the Z symbol. They're like, yeah, I totally fell asleep after that. Like, like I was zombified, I don't know why. Some practices are like that though in yoga. It just, which was great because I slept very well. All right, here we go. Placing the hands around that front foot, tucking the back toe, lifting the knee, sliding the front foot back. This time we're gonna roll shoulders back and down. Nice high plank here. You can use your knees if you like. And when you're ready, if you'd like, you can come on down to the floor, point the toes. Inhale to cobra. 
take a deep breath here. Maybe you press up into up dog. This requires more upper body strength. Breathing and on your next exhale, you'll just tuck those toes under. Send your hips up to the sky meeting once again in downward facing dog. If your knees are bent, that's fine. The important part of down dog is that your arms are about a 45 degree angle this way. And your, your wrists look like they're in a neutral type of position. Your fingers are spread nice and wide. It's better to be like this than it is to have the legs straight and like this, because you're almost like in a plank and this is not um, really effective in down dog. So we want our shoulders to feel strong, like feel that is one of the anchoring points in down dog. So better to have a bend in the knee and allow that feeling of a nice flat back, kind of a straight line, almost straight line between the wrists and the hips. Walk the dog here. On your next exhale, go ahead and bring the knees down, point the toes, send the hips back to the heels, walk the hands forward and begin to walk the hands out to the right. Good job. Stretch the left side of the ribs and then walk your hands back to center. Inhale, exhale, walk the hands over to the left and feel this right side ribs stretching here. Good. And walking hands back to center. I'm gonna bring the hands up toward the body. Now, if this is starting to get uncomfortable, feel free to cross the legs, come over into easy seated. But if you're fine there, you can even grab a block, placing it underneath the hips. You can grab two blocks if you need, kind of double stack it there, sit higher. So that might be more accessible. So any of those modifications are just fine for this. All right, nice tall spine. So this is called hero's pose, hero. I always think of, I don't know why, but like a movie like, I don't know, some Kung Fu movie or I don't know. Cause I think of those movies are really like embodiment of hero. I'm gonna inhale the arms up over, exhale down. Good, inhaling up and exhale down. One more time, inhale up and exhale back down. We're gonna bring our right foot out in front here. So you can stay with the blocks underneath the hips, that's fine. If you don't need them, you can move them out of the way. So this would be more advanced here where both sits bones are on the floor. This left leg is kind of out to the side. So we're nice and tall here. Maybe you walk your hands forward, keeping the back straight. So we start to feel a stretch here in the back of the leg. And if this is too much on your, your knee, having go all the way on the ground, no worries, just add a block under there. There you go. Bring those toes up toward the sky. If they're just pointed forward, bring them up. And breathe. Walk the hands back. And we're gonna switch the leg. That's out. Good. Nice tall spine here. You can even engage a mudra with your hands. So we, you might have seen this mudra where you have the thumb and the index finger together. Um, I've been doing either the ring finger and the thumb together. This is for grounding. Or both the middle finger and the ring finger together. This is good for, as I'm going through the prime cleanse, this has been really good for that, for helping things be like pushed out that I don't need anymore. As I've heard in yoga classes, lots of times, letting go of things that no longer serve me. This mudra is supposed to support that. And I know it's like, yeah, 
gonna rock out, but that's not that's not what it is. This is um, prativi mudra. What? Prativi mudra. <laughs> Maybe you just test the water, see if you don't need the block, and if it's like, no, I need it, and that's fine, just don't let it go. Or maybe you need more blocks, that's fine. Maybe we walk forward. Walking our, when I say walk forward, walk the hands forward. And then walking the hands back. Then bringing that foot back. Bringing the foot back. There we go. So another modification for this would be to have not just the leg out, but maybe the out straight, but have one out bent. So this is another modification for hero's pose. And maybe you engage your mudras here. And think of your intention. I listen with love to my body's messages. Switch legs, bringing out the left leg. Yeah. And if you're sitting in a chair doing this, that's just fine too. You can sit in the chair and then bring one leg out, bring the other, bring the other out, you know, switch them. As you exhale, feel your navel drawing in toward your spine. And then release that. <clears throat> now coming down to a, just a regular cross-legged pose for now, um, we're gonna bring our left leg down so that the, where the shin is parallel with the front of the mat, placing the right ankle on that left knee and then placing the right knee on the left ankle. So just stacking on top. If this is too much for you, you're welcome to fuse that right calf to the left shin, just holding it there. Or you're welcome to grab a block or blankets probably better here because that's not the softest feeling. But if your leg is up here, just grab something, place there. And then you want your toes to be pointed forward. So this is a nice hip opener. So far we've done mostly hip openers. All right, walking the hands forward, keeping the spine straight, feeling the stretch in the right hip, maybe grabbing a block placing the forehead on that block, maybe. And maybe you use two blocks. If you sit down a lot during the day, this could be really a great exercise or yoga stretch for you to kind of loosen up the hips. If you start to feel numbness, ease back just a bit. Loosen the jaw as you're here. The jaw might start to get tight. That might be a, a sign just, hey, this is a bit too much. Let's back out just a bit. And breathe, remembering to engage that Darth Vader breath. When you're ready, walking the hands back, lifting the heart back up over the hips, and then we're gonna switch the leg that's on bottom. Same modifications that applied last time, Apply here, you can have the shin, in front of the shin, bring that left calf, fusing that left calf in front of the right shin, or placing any type of support under this left knee. Toes pointed forward. Okay, and when you're ready, we'll walk the hands forward. Ooh, mama, yeah. That's good stuff. And breathe. Feeling the stretch in your left hip. And if it's available to you, go ahead and walk the hands out. And feel free during any of my practices to put on some music, something that you like. There's um, on a, a Spotify playlist, it might be under my Grace Yoga, 
I, I do. I use Spotify a lot during my live classes, face to face. This is a live class, but I mean face to face class. And I do have some Spotify lists out there. Um, I think it's under Grace Yoga. You're welcome to check those out and use them if you want to. There's one song on there called Breathing Space. It's really amazing. Breathe here. Breath does create the space. And on your next exhale, we'll walk back. Good. Right. So we're going to continue on another pose. Um, we've done this one before. It's called cow head pose or cow face pose. Um, we're going to bring the left like heel kind of beside on the outside of that right hip, then the right heel comes around. Ooh, and this kind of gets into some different uh, hip muscles here, or hip, you know, the hip flexor. It's more in the front part is where I'm feeling it. You may feel it somewhere else, that's fine. And the same thing applies here. You can put blankets. That's awesome, I'm glad that you're able to feel that you find a, a bit of ease in this pose or in the pose that you're doing. That's wonderful. And you'll notice that your body will start to open even more. So nice tall spine. So the opposite, well, the, the leg that's on top, you wanna to take the opposite arm up and then back, like you're padding your back. And then you're gonna reach around with your right arm and then keep the palm face out. So you're not going to have your palm touching your body. So I'm going to turn around so you can see. So I'm going to do, I'm going to do it the same way. So we've got it here, this. So you see my palm is facing out. And if your hands don't touch, that's okay. You can grab a strap using a strap to open those shoulders and to feel the hand-to-hand -hand connection here. And then we can release this going to the other side. So placing the opposite leg on top. Okay, good job. So notice which leg is on top and then take the opposite hand up and overhead and then like you're patting yourself on the back, then reach around with your left hand and up with the palm facing out. And I'm even finding that my hands are getting, being able to touch here, whereas I think before they were just barely touching the fingertips. Now I can almost feel the like fingers touching the whole fingers. Like, so my middle fingers are completely touching each other. Woo, <laughs> sounds kind of fun. <laughs> Sorry, and breathe. I'll turn around just so that we are facing each other. It's all right, you can use your strap to connect, to make that connection. And everybody's body's different. There's limitations that um, may just be muscular, just tightness. Um, and then there's bone to bone limitation. And so once you hit bone to bone, so maybe your arms won't go a certain way, um, that's just, that's, a, that's fine, there's no worries. And I'll demonstrate what I mean on me, one of my limitations. So we're gonna come out of that and then unwrap the legs. So what I'm talking about, one of my um, limitations when it comes to bone to bone is just uh, the yogic squat. So in yogic squat, we have, we come up on, I don't know if dem demonstrating from the side is any better, yeah, probably. But here, if we come up, if I stand up all the way, of course, I'm off the screen. Hello. <laughs> well, you come down. And as you come down, see your heels are underneath kind of like, kind of hip width or knee width or hip width distance apart. And then you come down kind of keeping, trying to keep your back flat. But for me, my, 
my feet are what is keeping me because this is bone hitting bone. It won't go any further. It won't stretch any further for me. So um, many um, people will be able to keep their heels completely on the ground here. But for me, I have a bone to bone limitation where it, my feet won't allow that to happen. So that's just me and everybody's different. So this is yogic squat. And this is also a wonderful hip opener. You can use um, a bolster. I probably need a bolster. You can use blocks at the back of the heels if you're also like not like if you're like me and cannot get um, your heels all the way to the ground and that really provides for a grounding sensation and breathing and when you're ready we can come all the way down so yeah I just wanted to show thank you so much for for mentioning that because I definitely I wanted I did want the yogic squat to be part of tonight's practice. I just didn't know how I was gonna get there. So thank you, you kind of let that lead right into there perfectly. All right. So we're gonna go ahead and roll onto our backs here and practice pigeon pose. So rolling on down, drawing up your right knee toward the chest, holding the right heel and then placing the right ankle Kind of just above the left knee. Deep breath here as you exhale, reach down toward your, for your right thigh, draw your right knee in toward the right side of the chest. And then we're gonna keep both heels flexed here. Breathe. So this is reclined pigeon. So it's the less, it's, uh, I wouldn't say, Harder or easier is not the quite not quite the right word, but it may be more accessible than the the other pigeon where we're laying on our stomachs. And begin to make tiny circles with the right knee or the the left toe. This is the right knee here, so the left knee. Just explore in this pose, see what feels really nice. Remember, keep those toes pointed out. Well, flex, keep the feet flexed with the toes pointed up. This would be pointed away, so pointed toward, drawn up toward the knees. On your next exhale, we'll release that leg down and then we're gonna just gonna switch to the other leg. So draw your left knee in toward your chest and then grab or hold on to the left heel, place the left ankle just below the right knee. Deep breath as you exhale, draw the navel in toward the spine. Let the right leg float up toward the chest. Maybe interlace the fingers behind the right thigh. Keep those feet flexed with those toes drawing up toward the knees. Good. <laughs> Sorry. I, I was telling myself, well, how am I going to do the yogic squat without me standing up? And then I just went ahead and did it. You know, you just kind of go with the flow. Like, Whatever, just, it's okay. Breathe, make tiny circles with that right knee, or maybe imagine a light at the tip of that left toe and just drawing circles with that. And I meant to say thank you. Thank you, Sight Tone 627. Thank you for chiming in. One more deep breath here. Just really find a space, a place here that feels really nice in one deep breath. And then exhale, release down. Very good. All right. And we're gonna roll over onto our tummies. So rolling over. Ah, oh, good. Remembering your intention. So I look at my little intention cards. I'm like, oh yeah. I love life. My intention, I love life. 
All right, coming down, resting the head on the mat, pointing the toes out. Bring your hands down by your sides on your next exhale. We're going to lift one leg and then lower. Inhale, back down. On your exhale, lift the other leg and then lower. And you can keep alternating or you can exhale, lift both. Inhale, down. And then lower down. We're going to lift the arms up with the legs next time, if you'd like, and also lifting the chest. So it would come up. Inhale, lifting the chest. The arms float away. Exhale, down. We're going to add the legs. Breathe. So here we're also massaging the abdomen, so aiding in digestion. One more here. And exhale down. Good. We're going to bring the, the palms down kind of on the edges of the mat here. And we're going to start to draw one knee out. We can do one at a time for beginners, or if you'd like, you can draw the other knee out too and the hips may come off of the floor, and that's okay. So this is frog pose. <laughs> Sorry, it looks, it kind of does look like a frog. But a nice stretch here. And the breath on the, um, the breath with us, well, this breathing deeply here all the way into the abdomen really does help digestion, so be prepared. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Or maybe I'm not. I don't know. All right. Then we're going to extend the legs long. If you did one at a time, that's fine. We're going to press the forearms into the mat, lifting the chest away, and then the elbows underneath shoulders here with the palms planted nicely on the floor. The legs can come together with the toes pointed out. And then here we are in Sphinx pose. Whoa. What did I say? AIDS and digestion. So you want to feel as if you're, like if you were on a slip and slide, and you'd like just slide yourself forward. So press your elbows and forearms into the mat. and then lower down. So walk the hands back until the chest comes down to the floor. Bend the knees up, reach back, maybe grab the feet with the hands. Deep inhale here, exhale, draw those heels toward the buttocks. You can keep your head rested on the mat. Stretching the quads. And breathing. You can stay here if you like, or if you want to move on on your next exhale, you'll kick your feet into your hands, let the chest peel away from the floor as we meet in bow pose. And when you're ready, release down. Maybe one leg at a time. And then you're going to press up. So press your hands into the floor. Coming up. Seek, 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 sink the hips back. Sorry. Seek, seek. <laughs> sink the hips back to the heels as we meet in childs. I'm sorry. I don't know why I was calling sink, seek. It's been a long day, I guess, and this is, must be super relaxing even for me. So. Mm -hmm. For me, it feels really awesome to shift 
the hips from side to side. So just give that a whirl, see if it feels nice. And if it doesn't, you can stay here and just breathe. Just breathing in child's pose is super amazing. On your next exhale, we're gonna plant our hands into the mat, pressing up into tabletop. We're gonna walk the heels out even further to the edges of the mat here. The big toes are slightly touching. So just, sorry, yeah, slightly touching. And then we're gonna sink our hips back again to the heels, walk the hands forward. So this is wide-legged child po child's pose. Nice deep breaths all the way into the lower belly. One more deep breath here, walking the hands out just a little bit more maybe. And then on your next exhale, we'll come up to tabletop once again. And then I'm gonna press up into plank pose. Send the hips up into downward facing dog. Breathe that left leg up to the sky. Exhale the left knee toward the left wrist. Plant that left knee down. Then walk the left ankle over toward the right. And then bring your right knee down. So now this is the other pigeon pose that I was talking about. If this doesn't feel very good for you, you're welcome to turn back over and do the reclined pigeon. So notice you can use your back foot as kind of like leverage to see where you want your hips to be. So adjust your hips to where you want them to be and then when you're ready, you can either stay up or you can move the heart forward and down toward the mat. Trying to keep your hips square. So not sinking one hip to one side, but really just keeping the hips even over the mat. Even if they're not touching, that's fine. They don't need to touch the mat. And then this heel of your front foot, it doesn't have to be forward. It can be even back further, and that might give a little bit. It's kind of like a little lever. Find that space that's right in the middle for you. That's your space, your middle ground. Maybe you stay here. Maybe you take the heart all the way to the floor, walking the hands out. Not going past your level of, of, I wouldn't say comfort, but past your level, whatever, wherever you're at. And then the back heel, you can keep the toes pointed out or you can tuck the toes so the heel stays kind of pointed up toward the sky. And if this is too much, you're welcome to come out of this at any point and maybe sink back into child's pose. So child's pose is one of those poses that's like, uh-uh, I'm not doing that. And child's pose is a good one to, to kind of wait in until you're ready. So we're gonna come back into tabletop, drawing that left leg back, tuck the toes under, and then we're gonna lift the knees up. So rolling shoulders back and down, meeting in plank once again here. I don't know if you can hear me breathing and how it's shaking. It's because I'm drawing the navel in toward the spine and moving into that space of, of um, and this is a little bit challenging or medium sized challenge and then press the hips up to the sky. Maybe walk the toes up just a few inches. Inhale the right leg up. I exhale that right knee behind the right wrist and then walk that foot out just as far as you want. Doesn't have to go out super far or you can make it go where the, the shin is parallel with the front of the mat and then begin to walk that, place the left knee down on the mat and walk that foot back until your hips are over where you would like it for it to be in this practice today. When you're ready, you can stay here or you can walk the hands out even further. 
Think of your intention here. You can feel in my, this is my left hip, but I'm trying to cue uh, mirror image. So I kind of keep bringing up my bowling because I used to bowl. And this, this hip is my, this is probably my dominant side or this left leg is my dominant leg. Is definitely tighter than the other side. So in, it's more challenging definitely than on the other side. So you can stay up or you can move down further. If the jaw is starting to clench or tighten, just see if you can find some softness. So ease, softness, loosen the jaw, soften the eyes. And if you're like, oh my Lord, I need to come out of this, then, then you can at any time. And a definitely numbness or tingling is not a good thing. So you want to come out if you feel any of that. Pain is not a good thing. So you want to ease out of it if you feel any of that. When you're ready, walking your hands back. Planting the hands down. Kind of walking the back foot forward, sliding the front foot back, meeting in tabletop. And we're gonna take that wide leg child's pose one more time here. So send the knees nice and wide, barely touch the big toes together. Maybe they're just slightly apart. And then sink your hips back to your heels. Yes, win. I was talking about it's the little wins in life that make the day good. And so for me, being able just to say the word sink that last time was a little win. Yay. All right, thank you. Yeah, we're going to wrap up our practice here, coming up into tabletop and rolling back over to our backs here, hugging the knees into the chest. Rocking them from side to side, making circles here with the knees, one direction and then the other. And then taking any other pose that you'd like to take today. Sorry, I have a hair in my eye, so I'm like trying to teach and, and get that out of my eye at the same time. Like for example, you may want to do happy baby, which you can hold the backs of the thighs, the shins, maybe wrap the peace fingers around the big toes. You might feel the sacrum or the tailbone starting to lift. So see if you can press those down toward the mat. Notice if the shoulder blades are starting to come off of the mat. See if you can get them grounded onto the mat, tucked underneath the ribs. And smile. Think of your intention, something positive for you today. Good. If there's anything else you'd like to practice, you're welcome to maybe go up into plow pose, shoulder stand. Maybe you just hang out here and it's like, nah, just let's take it nice and easy today. Sending the feet up to the sky. And I, if you are new to watching me, I always encourage you to Take your hands, lightly place them on your legs and glide them down because this helps um, the lymphatic system and it also helps to get rid of cellulite. So yeah. And cellulite's not bad, it's natural. We all have some, but it's nice to have, you know, the natural amount because cellulite could be a sign of lymphatic backup and lymph the lymph system is a, is a way that our bodies get rid of waste. All right, awesome job. Thank y'all so much for being here. Let's go into Shavasana, the last pose of the practice, which 
is sometimes the most challenging because all we do is lay there and we observe our breath. And as we start to think about the busyness of the day, we just have to return our awareness back to our breath. And when we do that, we allow our minds to maybe drop into a meditative state. And we let all the things that we did during our practice tonight kind of sink in. So you can grab maybe a, something to cover your eyes and maybe roll up something to place under the knees to reduce arching in the low back. Soften the jaw, taking a deep breath in through the nose. We're gonna sigh that out. Notice how the body starts to melt into the floor. So tuck your shoulder blades underneath the ribs, the back of the ribs, and then let your arms come out. If lying on your back is not comfortable, you can lie on your side. You can take any position that you're most comfortable in. So don't feel the need to just lay on your back because I know that's not comfortable for some. Sometimes even me, sometimes it hurts to lay on my back. So bring your awareness to your breath. Take in another deep breath now. Exhale, sighing that out. And take the next few moments just to observe your natural breath. And as your mind wanders away, as distractions come around, just bring your awareness back to your breath. If you're ready, begin to wiggle fingers and toes, maybe point and flex the feet, rotate the wrists. Take some gentle stretches. And take a deep breath. And rolling over to your favorite side whenever you're ready. Pressing up to seated. Good practice. The divine light and the divine grace that is in me recognizes and is so thankful for the divine light and grace that is in you. Namaste. Thank you.